Well, hey guys, today we're going to be talking about everything you need to know about vitiligo. What is vitiligo? Vitiligo is a chronic depigmenting condition. Vitiligo specifically involves cells called melanocytes. These are the cells that are responsible for making pigment that determines the color of your skin, your hair, and your eyes. With vitiligo, melanocytes are progressively lost over time. This leads to the appearance of patches of milky white skin. Vitiligo is generally accepted as an autoimmune disease. And basically what this means is that your immune system, which is tasked with fighting off invaders like flus and colds, Sometimes, for whatever reason, in certain people, it rebels against your body. And in the case of vitiligo, the immune system decides it's going to attack the pigment-producing cells, the melanocytes. Who gets vitiligo? Vitiligo affects anywhere from 0.5 to 1% of the general population. It really can affect anyone. All ages, all races, all ethnicities, it affects both men and women. Generally speaking, patients present with vitiligo for the first time falling into one of two age categories. Before their 10th birthday, that's early onset, or after their 30th birthday, that's late onset. Why do people get vitiligo? Well, a good chunk of the reason why you get vitiligo has to do with your genetics. About 80% of the reason why you have vitiligo, you can blame on your genetics, but that doesn't tell the full story. If you take 100 people who have vitiligo and are also identical twins, only 23 of those people will have an identical twin who also has vitiligo. So that suggests that there's a lot more going on on with vitiligo than just your genetics. About 20% of it, you can also blame your environment on. You can't control your genetics, but there are certain things in your environment that can influence vitiligo, and we're gonna cover those in this video. So keep watching so you can realize some things that you might wanna avoid if you have vitiligo. Now, if you take anything away from this video, it's going to be this. There is an increased association with vitiligo and other autoimmune diseases. So if you have vitiligo, the likelihood that you develop another autoimmune disease in your life, or maybe you already have one, is pretty good in comparison to people who don't have vitiligo. The autoimmune disease that is most strongly associated with vitiligo is actually thyroid disease. Having your thyroid labs checked regularly is really important to screen for autoimmune thyroid disease. You are at a greater risk, likely, because of a background tendency to developing autoimmune diseases. 15% of adults with vitiligo have autoimmune thyroid disease. 5 to 10% of kids with vitiligo have autoimmune thyroid disease. Patients who have vitiligo also can develop other autoimmune diseases like rheumatoid arthritis, systemic lupus erythematosus, something called pernicious anemia, which is basically an autoimmune attack against certain cells in your GI tract that are responsible for absorbing B12. Patients who have vitiligo often have other autoimmune hair or skin disorders like alopecia areata, an autoimmune attack on the cells that grow your hair, psoriasis, or the condition called lichen sclerosis et atrophicus, which as a side note, recently I did a video explaining everything you need to know about lichen sclerosis. So if you are coping with that, you definitely want to check that video out. Those of you who have vitiligo who are watching, let me know right now in the comments, have you ever had a bone marrow transplant or a stem cell transplant? Patients who have had a bone marrow transplant or a stem cell transplant are three times more likely to have vitiligo. Vitiligo can be the presenting sign actually of metastatic melanoma. Vitiligo can also be triggered by medications that are used to treat metastatic melanoma. If you think about it, those treatments are really trying to destroy those dangerous cancer cells that arose within melanocytes. So as they go to work to clear out those deadly cancer cells from melanocytes, well, maybe they're gonna have some bystander effect on healthy melanocytes leading to a vitiligo-like picture. How do you know that you have vitiligo? Best way to know is to see a board-certified dermatologist. There are a lot of skin conditions where you have loss of color of the skin. Idiopathic guttate hypomelanosis is a really common skin condition that I actually have a video on. I'll link down below in the description box. There's also the skin condition tinea versicolor related to a little yeast. It can sometimes look like vitiligo. So definitely check out my video on that topic as well so you have a better understanding of other conditions that can lead to a loss of color in the skin. But when it comes to vitiligo as a skin condition, the onset is very, very sneaky. It's a lot more in you don't just wake up one morning with full-blown depigmentation. It usually starts with little confetti-shaped patches of loss of pigment of the skin. The borders of vitiligo are very well-defined and convex. And when you take a very 
careful look at the borders of vitiligo it can look exactly like the surrounding normal color of your skin or in some cases it can be darker or in other cases it can be a little bit lighter than your normal background skin color when vitiligo is in the very early stages however and it's very active meaning the autoimmune attack is coming in in full throttle there's oftentimes around the border of the area where you're losing skin color, the border is often red and inflamed. Now vitiligo can happen on any body site, but it is more common in areas of the body that are frequently sun exposed, like your face, your hands. Vitiligo is also a lot more common on body sites that are exposed to frequent friction trauma rubbing. For example, your eyes, your nose, your lips, I mean, you're always chewing, talking. Lips, you know, they have a lot of wear and tear. Also more common in the skin folds and the nipples, which as a side note, happen to be areas where at baseline, there is more pigment there. If you're someone who has vitiligo, something that I want you to understand is that vitiligo exhibits a phenomenon called Kebner or isomorphic response. What the heck is that? Something's really important for you to understand and grasp. Anytime you have trauma, friction, injury to the skin, that can bring out more vitiligo in that area. It could be a physical trauma, like getting a cut, a scrape, or a scratch. It could be a mechanical trauma, like constantly licking your lips, rubbing your eyes, rubbing your nose, areas where you have chronic pressure, like your elbows and knees, or under areas where you constantly wear a lot of tight-fitting clothing. And if you're someone who loves back scratchers or dry brushing, you need to be careful because that can elicit more vitiligo for you. Burns are another type of skin injury that can elicit vitiligo, whether it be a sunburn, a chemical burn, or a thermal burn, depending on the depth of injury. And skin conditions that generate a lot of inflammation in the skin can kick off vitiligo. The inflammation of shingles can trigger vitiligo in the area affected. Psoriasis itself can trigger vitiligo in areas impacted by the psoriasis. Skin inflammation though can come about about as a result of things that come in contact with the skin or things that you are actively putting on the skin. So if you have vitiligo, you need to be really careful actually with your skincare products and skincare routine. Because if you start using something that triggers a contact dermatitis from the product, maybe you're allergic to a certain ingredient in the product, or it's just irritating, that irritation can bring about vitiligo. I suggest doing a patch test to make sure a product is not going to irritate your skin before putting it, say, all over your face. Radiation therapy for different types of cancers can cause inflammation in the skin that triggers more vitiligo. What are some other scenarios that may aggravate or trigger vitiligo? Pregnancy, oral contraceptive pills, profound stress, whether it be emotional stress or physical stress, having an underlying vitamin deficiency can trigger vitiligo because it puts a lot of stress on your body. As a side note, I have a whole playlist on skin signs of underlying health problems, and I cover a lot of the skin signs of different vitamin and nutrient deficiencies, so definitely check that one out. Here's something you wanna pay attention to if you have vitiligo or if you have a family history of it, pay attention to your moles because they are often often one of the earlier signs that you may be developing vitiligo. It doesn't happen with everyone, but there's a specific change that can happen with your moles, and that change is a halo phenomenon. Halo moles or halo nevi, what the heck is that? The halo phenomenon can be seen in one or several moles. First, you develop a rim around the mole of lighter skin. The mole itself may become pinker and lighter in color, and eventually the mole can completely go away and you are left with a depigmented milky white patch of skin. That can be a clue to the development of vitiligo. Roughly 31% of cases of vitiligo have multiple halo nevi, as they're called, or halo moles, halo phenomenon. That can be a clue. You may think of vitiligo as a skin condition, but melanocytes lead to not only skin color, but also hair color. Vitiligo can affect your hair and lead to depigmentation and white hair, either on your head, your eyebrows, your eyelashes, or other body sites. Vitiligo that involves the hair unfortunately tends to have a worse prognosis, probably because the hair follicle is the site of the melanocyte stem cell reserve. So when it comes to repigmenting and bringing back your skin color, it's that reserve in the follicle that is necessary. So if the vitiligo is already affecting the hair follicles, it's often a lot more stubborn to treat and more refractory 
two typical vitiligo treatments. You also have melanocytes in your eye, specifically the retina. Vitiligo can have an impact there. However, your eye color does not typically change. I bet you didn't know this, but melanocytes live in your ear, specifically in your cochlea. That is the part of the inner ear responsible for hearing. There are rarer conditions that have vitiligo and hearing loss. Here's another thing I really want you to take away from this video is that vitiligo affects everyone very differently. Unfortunately, there's nothing that can predict how extensive your pigment loss will be, meaning you know how much of your body surface area will be involved, and there's nothing that will predict how fast you're going to lose that pigment. Vitiligo is a lot more obvious in people who have naturally dark skin. People who have a paler skin type, they often don't even notice that they have vitiligo. It only becomes more obvious maybe if they happen to get a suntan, and then all of a sudden they see those areas. The typical course of vitiligo is that the patches of involvement will spread over several months and then stabilize. For some people, the pigment can spontaneously come back. A sign that it's spontaneously coming back is you will start to see pigment appearing around the hair follicles because again, the hair follicle is where the melanocyte stem cells reside. So they're gonna start to make their way up to the surface of the skin, the epidermis and repigment there. So you're gonna see little dots of repigmentation within the vitiligo patch. Those little dots of repigmentation around the hair follicle also can be seen when you are being treated for your vitiligo and the treatments are starting to work. So that's a very good sign. While vitiligo can either spontaneously repigment or repigment as a result of treatment, it is often the case that later on down the road, a bout of extension of the pigment loss will occur again. Cycles of extension of the pigment loss followed by periods of stability are par for the course. So avoiding things that can lead to a bout of pigment loss, like excessive rubbing, friction, trauma on the skin, trying to avoid contact dermatitis, not getting a sunburn or doing your best to avoid sunburn, any kind of trauma or injury to the skin. Those are things that you as someone with vitiligo can proactively do to minimize recurrences and flares and extension of pigment loss. What about getting rid of vitiligo? Is there a cure for it? Unfortunately, there is no cure for it. Now in this video, we're not even gonna get into all of the different types of treatment for vitiligo. That's beyond the scope of this video, but there are a lot of really amazing therapies for vitiligo. Vitiligo is a condition that is best managed under the care of a dermatologist, a board certified dermatologist, to determine the best treatments for your vitiligo. The aim of treatment is to stabilize the condition and for satisfactory repigmentation. Vitiligo at certain body sites is more responsive to treatment than others. The face and trunk tend to be more responsive, whereas the hands and feet are a lot more stubborn to repigment. Response to treatment is a lot better if treatment is initiated early. Again, that sign of the border being red and inflamed, that type of vitiligo is usually a lot more responsive than a depigment patch that has been there for a long time. That's not to say you can't get repigmentation from patches that have stably been present at a given location for a long time, but patches that are actively spreading, they're actually a lot more responsive to treatment because that redness, that is the autoimmune attack coming in. And so if treatment is initiated then to halt it, it really can help with repigmentation and slowing the spread of depigmentation. Is there any sort of diet that can help with vitiligo? There's no one specific diet for vitiligo or a diet plan that you should follow. Work to incorporate foods rich in antioxidants. That's gonna be fruits, vegetables, basically a very colorful diet. Diets rich in antioxidants can help slow down the generation of free radicals that further damages those melanocytes. So it definitely can be helpful. Now that's not to say that eating a bunch of fruits and vegetables is going to completely repigment your skin, but it may support uh, responses to treatment. Now, if you do have an underlying vitamin or mineral deficiency, correcting that in many cases can help a lot with the vitiligo. But the majority of people who have vitiligo, there's not really going to be a dietary intervention that is going to treat it or get rid of it. What about going gluten-free? No, there's no evidence that a gluten-free diet in the absence of an underlying gluten sensitivity or celiac disease, uh, there's no evidence that going gluten-free is necessarily going to be helpful for vitiligo. Now, if you do have celiac disease or dermatitis herpetiformis, those are autoimmune diseases where you have a problem 
with gluten, then absolutely gluten-free is going to be necessary for those conditions. And by calming down the autoimmune inflammatory process through the necessary dietary intervention for those specific conditions, then yes, that can be helpful. But if you don't have those, there's no reason to eliminate gluten from your diet. Um, it, it's not proven to be helpful. Should you go taking different dietary supplements for vitiligo? I would say no. Again, unless you have an underlying nutrient deficiency, there's no dietary supplement that is going to treat or prevent vitiligo. And I have a lot of videos on my channel cautioning that not all dietary supplements are without harm. There are risks with getting too many vitamins and minerals from supplements. It may not be helpful. It may actually be harmful to you in the long run. What are the complications that can happen from having vitiligo? One of the major complications is a psychosocial effect. It can really have a profound impact on one's overall quality of life. So the psychosocial distress is not something to take lightly. Again, one of the main take home points too that I want you to leave this video with is that people who have vitiligo, there is an increased association with other autoimmune diseases, most commonly autoimmune thyroid disease. So being aware of that is really important. But generally speaking, people who have vitiligo typically are otherwise in good health and the vitiligo itself itself is not necessarily dangerous. Are there any skin problems that can happen from having vitiligo? Where you have the vitiligo, you have lost the pigment cells. So those areas are very susceptible to sunburn. So you do need to be very careful in the sun, always protect your skin with sunscreen because those areas are a lot more vulnerable to burns. And again, a sunburn can elicit more vitiligo. I'm gonna end on a hopefully positive note. One thing about vitiligo that research suggests, you know, while there's an association with an increased risk of other autoimmune diseases, there's also a positive health association. There is some evidence that patients who have vitiligo may have a lower risk of certain cancers, including internal cancers, as well as skin cancer. Patients who have vitiligo, they have a lower association of basal cell carcinoma of the skin, squamous cell carcinoma of the skin, and melanoma. There's also some data that shows that patients who have vitiligo have a lower risk of certain internal cancers. However, the exception is that patients who have vitiligo, there seems to be an increased association with thyroid cancer. So you're not off the hook there, but by and large, it seems as though having vitiligo, it may offer a protective effect against certain internal cancers and skin cancer. We also see this type of effect in patients who have other autoimmune skin conditions like polymorphous light eruption and autoimmune attack uh, when you go out in the sun. I have a whole video on this as a side note, but those patients seem to have a lower uh, risk of skin cancers, probably because their immune system is you know, in there getting rid of stuff and so they don't have the same chance of developing abnormal cells that hang around. Their immune system is a lot more aggressive at getting rid of stuff in the skin. All right, y'all, that's what I wanted to talk about in today's video. Hopefully this video was very educational to any of you dealing with vitiligo. It affects 0.5 to 2% of the population, so if you don't have vitiligo and you just watch this video, I really appreciate that because it does help the video get more reach. And if you know someone who has vitiligo, I would greatly appreciate it if you shared this video with them. Hopefully it provides them some information to help them out in the long run. Now, if you have that condition I mentioned earlier, lichen sclerosis, you're definitely going to want to check out my video on that topic. I'll link it on the end slate. So watch that one next if that is of interest to you. But if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.